In early 2013, the FIA announced their intentions at consolidating the racing ladder to Formula One. Gerhard Berger, who was the FIA's single-seater commission president at the time, wanted to achieve this by introducing a new category that would act as the first step for young drivers looking to make the transition from karting into single-seaters. Now in 2019, this category has ballooned into the double digits with championships spanning the globe and has already produced two Formula One drivers. But this didn't happen overnight, so let's have a look into the past and dive into the history of FIA Formula Four. To start, we must first go back to 2013 to see what the bottom of the junior formula ladder looks like. There are many championships we could pick here, such as the ADAC Formal Masters in Germany or the BRDC F4 Championship in the UK, as well as engine-based categories like Formula Ford, Abarth, Renault, BMW, Volkswagen, and so on. While all of these championships act as a starting point, they can vary so much from each other that it makes it hard to compare the results of two different drivers from two different disciplines. Seeing this, the FIA wanted to create a new category that would level the playing field across the globe by applying just one set of rules and regulations. This would allow drivers to compete in their own regions with the full knowledge they are racing in the same machinery as someone on the other side of the globe. Their vision was FIA Formula 4. Now, do keep in mind that back in 2013, both the current Formula 2 and Formula 3 regulations were years away, so an all-encompassing regulation across multiple championships was seen as rather ambitious. In March of that year, the FIA produced a set of draft regulations, which included keeping the costs of a racing season to under €100,000 a year, and to allow drivers as young as 15 to compete. Most importantly, however, was the outline for what kind of car would run under these regulations. The idea was that, while multiple car and engine manufacturers would create machinery for these championships, none of them would actually be competing against each other, at least not to start with. Instead, organisers would pick and choose which car and engine combination they wanted, and that would become the car used in that championship. The regulations for the car were pretty self-explanatory. A slicks and wings formula featuring an engine capped at 150 brake horsepower, though it would change to 160 brake horsepower soon after. Come July, there was already a significant interest in manufacturers in the new formula, particularly from those already producing machinery for other categories. Miguel, Signatec, Tatus and Delara were all reported to be working on cars, but we would have to wait until the following year before we got to see if any of the proposals would come to fruition. The first championship to undergo the F4 transformation was the Formula Abarth Championship in Italy, with the series being rebranded as the F4 Italian Championship for the 2014 season. The old Tatus FA010 and Fiat engine combination was swapped out for an FIA F4 ready Tatus F4 T014 and 1.4 litre turbocharged Abarth engine. The first season got underway in June and saw moderate success, gathering at least 20 entrants per event, which was double the car count from the final Formula Abarth season. With the Formula 4 concept proving itself viable in Italy, other organisations were quick to announce their involvement in the scheme for the 2015 season. Let's have a look. 2015 saw a total of seven new Formula 4 championships spring up throughout the year. Some of these, like the Italian series, were rebranded from older championships to run the new FIA F4 regulations, while others were entirely new championships established by local organisers known as ASNs. Let's start with one of the rebranded series, the F4 German Championship. This is the former ADAC Formal Masters Championship, and since the series still retains ADAC as a title sponsor, it is still more commonly referred to as ADAC Formal 4. Like the Italian series, the ADAC Formula 4 Championship also switched to the new Tatus and Abarth combination, replacing the previously used Delara Formulino Plus car and Volkswagen engine. The rebranding reinvigorated the series, doubling the previous season's car count to the point where some drivers actually failed to qualify for some races due to track limitations. By the end of its 24 race schedule, more than 50 individual drivers participated at some point. Next we will move north for a brand new series, known as the F4 Northern European Zone Championship. This series was set up in collaboration with various Russian and Finnish ASNs, including SMP Racing and Koryanen GP, but the championship was more often abbreviated to just SMP F4. 
Like the Italian and German series, the S&P F4 Championship opted to run the Tatus and Abarth car for its participants. Unlike the previous two championships, all the drivers would be run by a rotating group of engineers and racing personnel, rather than competing for separate teams. The season kicked off in May and fared quite well for a brand new series, bringing in at least 12 drivers per event over the course of the first season. With both the ADAC and SMP4 series joining the Italian Championship in using the Tattoos and Abarth combination, let's now turn our attention to the championship starting in 2015 using different machinery. Moving west, we have the British Formula 4 Championship, which was rebranded to the MSA Formula Championship for the 2015 season. This championship elected to use the car Miguel was working on and paired it with a Ford EcoBoost 1.6 litre turbocharged engine. As Miguel had been the dominant chassis used in the previous season, it made sense that the series would continue to use it as the car of choice, along with the obvious inclusion of a Ford engine. The series saw no change in the amount of competitors for its inaugural season compared to previous years, with a grid count of around 20 participants per weekend. As a side note, the reason this championship lacked Formula 4 in its name was due to the British Racing Drivers Club Formula 4 Championship owning the rights to the F4 name in the UK. So instead, the organisation behind the series, Motorsports Association, opted to use their name instead. This will be important later. Now let's head down under to Australia for the F4 Australian Championship. Like the MSA Formula Championship, this series opted to use the Miguel and Ford combination for its race car. Interestingly, while Australia already had a long-running Formula Ford Championship at the time, the organisation behind the F4 series, CAMS, decided to create a brand new championship instead. Due to this regional competition, the Australian F4 Championship's inaugural season saw a car count of around 10 for most of the season. A far cry compared to the other series we've already discussed. Next up is a hop across the Pacific with the F4 NACAM Championship. Though the series is based in Mexico, it actually catered to drivers from North and Central America, the Caribbean, and Northern parts of South America, as the name would suggest in Spanish. Like the two previous championships, this series also opted to use the Miguel and Ford combination for its car. The series had its start with a non-championship round as part of the 2015 Formula 1 Mexican Grand Prix with an 18-car field. Once the championship actually kicked off though, the car count took quite a bit of a hit, managing a grid just into the double digits for the rest of the season. Due to the location of this series, it actually ran across two calendar years to better suit the weather conditions. As such, the inaugural season started in November and finished in June in 2016. Heading back to East Asia, we arrive at the People's Republic of China for the F4 Chinese Championship. The organisers of this series also opted to use the Miguel chassis, but decided to pair it with a Chinese-built, non-turbocharged 2.0-litre Geely engine. This made the Miguel chassis the first to be paired with more than one engine manufacturer. The inaugural season got off to a rocky start, with the first two rounds of the calendar both cancelled one after the other. When the championship did get underway in July, it was met with a subpar car count, averaging smaller than 10 cars per event. An additional race was added to the calendar in January 2016 to make up for the cancelled events, but with the series only racing on three different circuits across five rounds, this wasn't exactly what the FIA was hoping for. Finally, to wrap up 2015, we only need to make a short step over the Sea of Japan to see the F4 Japanese Championship. This series was set up by the organisers of the Super GT Championship, and used an entirely different car and engine combination than any of the series we've talked about so far. Dome was chosen as the series chassis manufacturer, while the 2.0-litre straight-4 engines were developed by Toyota Tuna Toms. The first season saw a bumper car count of well over 30 cars per event, which was especially promising given the fact that this was a brand new championship and not replacing anything else. It is also worth mentioning that this championship is not to be confused with the Formula 4 championship run by the JAF, who also run the Japanese Formula 3 championship at the time. While other championships were taking off left, right and centre, the Italian F4 Championship was going just as strongly and saw no drop off in participation. With the inclusion of the Japanese F4 series, it meant that the total number of championships was now up to 8, the total car count was up to 3, and the total number of engines was up to 4. While 2016 didn't have anywhere near the same amount of championships introduced as the previous year, it still included some notable entries as part of the second wave of Formula 4 championships. We will once again start with those championships using the Tatus and Abarth combo, first by heading to Spain for the F4 Spanish Championship. 
While this championship was set up by Spanish organizers RFEDA, this was actually in collaboration with Koiran and GP, the same organizers behind the SMP F4 championship. Because of this, the first season saw a lot of drivers from the SMP F4 championship take part. However, even if you include these drivers, the series only managed six full-time drivers over the course of the season. For the last of the Tatus and Abart series, we need to head to the Middle East for the F4 United Arab Emirates Championship. This championship was organised by the ATC UAE and was set up in such a way that drivers taking part in European based F4 championships would be able to make use of it as a pseudo winter series. They managed this by hosting the championship across two calendar years like the NACAM F4 series. Given the location of the championship, it only raced at two different circuits, Formula 1's Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi and the Dubai Autodrome used in MotoGP. While the initial car count was low, it eventually grew to double digits by the end of its first season, featuring a lot of drivers and teams from Europe. Back to Southeast Asia now and we have the aptly named F4 Southeast Asia Championship. This championship replaced the former Asia Cup series and included races held in Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines and Thailand for its debut season. The CF4 Championship is another user of the Miguel chassis, but instead of using either a Ford or Geely engine, it uses a 2.0-litre straight 4 engine developed by Renault Sport. Meritus GP would run all the cars in the series, as they did with the previous Asia Cup Championship. Like the UAE F4 Championship, CF4 was also held over two calendar years for its debut season. Despite a decent showing from drivers all around the Southeast Asia region, the full-time driver count was rarely above the double digits, with most drivers dropping in and out of the championship at random points during the season. Our last new entrant to the Formula 4 world in 2016 takes us back to North America with the brand new F4 United States Championship. This championship came as a surprise to some, as the United States has a long history of IndyCar bound feeder series such as F1600 at this level, so the FIA would be indirectly competing with them with the F1 bound Formula 4 championship. For its inaugural season, the series opted to use the locally built Crawford F416 paired with a 2 litre Honda engine you would expect to find in a Civic LX. In terms of turnout, the championship did much better than expected for a brand new series, with an average grid of 15 cars per event and a good chunk of those being full-time entrants. While the focus of this year has been on the newer championships, there had also been some developments in some of the already established series. To start with, the SMP F4 championship expanded south by allowing Dutch drivers to compete for points, as well as adding two races in the Netherlands to the calendar. It also ran as a support race for the 2016 Formula 1 Russian Grand Prix. Next, the MSA Formula Championship renamed itself to the British F4 Championship just two rounds into the 2016 season. This came about after the BRDC F4 Championship changed its name to BRDC F3 after launching a more powerful car, though ironically this new car was just a modified Tattoos F4 car, but that's a story for another time. The F4 NACAM series expanded to the United States for the first time as a support category for the 2016 Formula 1 United States Grand Prix, and the Italian F4 Championship saw such an increase in driver participation that some tracks could not legally allow all entrants to race. So by the end of 2016, we now have a total of 12 championships running to FIA F4 rules, with 4 separate chassis manufacturers and now 6 different engine suppliers. Compared to previous years, 2017 brought a change of pace, with only one new championship to add to the Formula 4 rostrum. Enter the F4 Danish Championship. Rather than replacing its National Formula 4 Championship, the organisers turned it into a multi-category series, with the F4 category running the Miguel and Renault package, while older Formula 4 cars would run under the F5 moniker. While this move did boost the car count into the high teens for most events, the majority of those were running Formula 4 machinery, leaving the new F4 cars hovering at around 6 per event. Perhaps due to the inundation of new Formula 4 championships based in Europe, both the Italian and ADAC F4 championships saw their driver counts drop by around a third for the 2017 season. Meanwhile, the United States F4 championship saw quite the opposite, with its car count more than doubling compared to 2016 to around 30 drivers per event. And finally, the SMP F4 series ditched the single team regulation and allowed multiple teams to enter the championship. Six teams would end up fielding cars over the course of the season, with most of those coming over from the Spanish series.
2018 saw the last major holdout enter the Formula 4 category, with the long-running French F4 Championship switching to the FIA's regulations. As a French-based series, it made sense that it would switch to the Miguel and Renault engine combination. Not only did this effectively put the Formula Renault 1.6 litre category to death, it also meant that every championship called F4 in Europe was now running to Formula 4 regulations. It also ended the confusion over whether or not the championship was an FIA F4 series or not, something new and old fans alike struggle to differentiate. Keeping with the series tradition, all cars are run by the organisers rather than by separate teams. The first season after switching regulations actually saw a small dip in participants, but not enough to put it into the danger of falling out of the double digits. 2018 saw three championships head to new countries, with the United States F4 Championship racing in Canada, the Australian F4 Championship racing in New Zealand, and the CF4 Championship hosting two rounds in India. 2018 also saw the Danish series quietly lose its FIA recognition. Although we can only speculate as to why this has happened, the series does still continue to this day. Finally, we enter 2019, where we once again have a single championship to talk about. The last FIA F4 championship to be announced will be based in South America, a location where F4 has lacked any real representation up until now. Using the Miguel chassis and Geely engine combination will be the FIA F4 Argentina championship. I say will as the championship is yet to actually commence. An initial calendar was released earlier in the year with the first round to be held in July, but since then there's been radio silence on that part, apart from the occasional Facebook post. The calendar did have rounds scheduled up until December though, so there is still a chance the series may actually start this year. And with that, we have discussed every officially sanctioned FIA F4 series. Yes, official series, but as we saw with the Danish series, F4 does exist without the FIA's acknowledgement. The first unofficial series we'll talk about is the Formula Pro USA F4 Western Championship, which started in 2018. Think of this as the regular United States F4 Championship, but run on the west coast of the country at circuits such as those in California and Oregon. As the US F4 sister series, it makes use of the same machinery, though with Onroke's acquisition of Crawford, it means the old car has since been renamed to the Ligier JS F4. Next up, we have the Formula Academy Finland, which runs entirely in, well, Finland, and had its first season in 2018. The series runs the Tatus Abart car and is actually another series run by Koran and GP. More specifically, this series is linked to the next one we will be talking about. Now, as I discussed earlier, there is already a championship colloquially known as SMPF4, which of course is the Northern European Zone Championship. Well, it was the Northern European Zone Championship. As of 2019, the NES F4 Championship no longer exists. With Quiranen setting up their own Finnish series the year prior, SMP and the Russian Autosport Federation decided to continue on as a wholly Russian-based series for 2019. Still racing with the Tattoo Sabat combination, the series visits various tracks across Russia, including the current F1 Grand Prix circuit held in Sochi. Apart from independent drivers entering their own personal F4 machinery at local events, these three are the only non-official F4 championships held at the recording of this video. Oh, and the Danish series as well. So four championships altogether. I figured it would be important to at least acknowledge these championships, especially since Quiran and GP has alluded to seeking for the FIA's blessing for its Finnish series in the near future. So on the face of it, apart from a couple mishaps, Formula 4 looks to be a healthy category with little to no major issues occurring during its formation. However, that has not been the case at all. The following I'm about to go through are those series that either never saw the light of day, never got FIA approval, or have since collapsed. The first of these series actually takes us back to 2014, as there was a potential second championship due to start alongside the Italian F4 championship. This series was known as F4 Sudamericana, and as the name might suggest, it could have been the FIA F4 Championship for South America. The organisers had set up the series before the FIA F4 rules were first announced, but noticed that their use of the Signatec Formula Renault car and Fiat engine could be enough for FIA accreditation. Once it became apparent that the car was not going to be approved, the series debuted without the FIA's blessing in 2014, only to fold a few years later. 
It has since been revived as the Formula Academy Sudamericana Championship in 2018 as a mostly Brazilian-based series, but only sees a handful of entrants per weekend. Next we have the USF4 Championship that was announced back in August 2015 and was due to start in 2016. This championship was to be run by Formula Race Promotions, the organisers of championships such as F2000 and the Atlantic Series, and it would have used the Miguel chassis and Ford engine combination. At some point after the announcement, the series all but disappeared, and later in September, the F4 United States Championship was announced. The original USF4 announcement didn't appear to have any connection to the FIA, while the one running today was fully backed by them, so perhaps that played a part in its few months lifespan. The website and press release still exist via internet archives for those interested, making it probably the shortest lived proposal in F4's short history. Next we have the FIA F4 Spanish Championship that was due to start in 2015. Now we know at this point that a Spanish F4 Championship did get underway the following year, but under completely different circumstances. The original series was announced towards the end of 2014 and was set to use the Miguel and Ford engine combination. However, it seems a disagreement between the organisers and investors in early 2015 caused the collapse and eventual cancellation of the series. Later that year, we saw the announcement of the new Spanish F4 Championship we discussed earlier, run by Coiran and GP. A smaller example, but an example nonetheless, is the proposed Benelux F4 Championship. This series was proposed by the Dutch Motorsport Federation at the end of 2015 and was due to run events in the Netherlands, as well as races in Belgium and Germany alongside the German F4 Championship. In January 2016, two of the proposed races in the Netherlands were merged with the SMP F4 calendar, with the series hosting what was known as the Dutch F4 Trophy within the championship instead. So while the initial concept didn't work out, it's easier to say that it merged with another series rather than failing outright. It may come as a surprise to some, but the Australian F4 Championship won't actually run in 2020. Organisers CAMS announced in early September 2019 that the series could be brought back the following year, but right now, as of the filming of this video, the series looks to have run its course. Now, the reason for its demise has been linked to its small car count and a general lack of interest from domestic drivers, but there has been calls from other Australian organisations that the closure of the series should be looked at by an official body. And finally, we have the F4 World Cup, which was announced back in 2016 as a yearly event that teams and drivers across the world could compete in. Since that announcement, however, there has been no new information regarding the proposal, but I'll be sure to bring it up every time F4 is mentioned. And with that, I think we're done here. It's entirely possible there are more championships that never made it to the public, but these are the ones we know anything about in 2019. So now that we're done looking at the past, let's have a look at what FIA F4 has in store for us in the future. Well, to start with, there's actually an event similar to the F4 World Cup concept due to take place later this year in mid-October called the F4 Asia Pacific Cup. This event will be held at the Ningbo International Speedway in China and will feature the top finishers from the Australian, Chinese, Japanese and Southeast Asian Championships as well as a few additional wildcard entries from those series. The round will be held like the Macau Grand Prix and the organisers hope to make it a yearly event. Though, as we now know, the Australian Championship won't be around next year, so we'll have to wait and see how it turns out. We also have the inaugural FIA Motorsports Games coming up, which will feature Formula 4 as part of the event, but with machinery we haven't seen up until now. The car that will be used will be created by KC Motor Group, or KCMG for short. This car differs from previous models as it will feature the Halo safety device as well as a 12kW energy retrieval system worked into the current Abarth engine, thus making it the first hybrid F4 car and the first to feature the Halo. Now that last point is especially important for the future of FIA Formula 4. As I'm sure most have noticed already, Formula 4 is one of the only open wheel series still left without some kind of head protection in 2019. Now, originally the homologation of the current crop of F4 cars was to last until the end of 2019 as per the initial set of regulations, but the FIA announced at the end of 2017 that this would be extended until the end of 2023. There is talk of some championships opting to upgrade their current cars with the Halo before the start of 2024, but as of now, there is nothing set in stone. Still, given how quickly the Halo has been adopted into other categories like F3 and even IndyCar, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing at least renders in the near future. 
So, with our history lesson out of the way, what do we think of Formula 4 as a category? Personally, I think the category has been an all-around good idea. I know some were hesitant at first since it seemed like the FIA were strong-arming their way into the lower categories in an attempt to make the non-FIA series obsolete, cases like in Australia where there really was no need to compete with a long-running Formula 4 championship spring to mind, but in retrospect, at least in 2019, the FIA has come up with a somewhat cohesive ladder to Formula 1, so ultimately I think it has been worth it, even if there were some casualties along the way. While it has replaced or superseded older categories, it has allowed us to more easily compare drivers across the globe in equal machinery. Not only that, it has also allowed us to actually know about these drivers too. Would we have known about Lance Stroll or Lando Norris so early in their careers had they not taken part in an FIA F4 championship? Maybe. But the extra attention these series gather, not to mention with the advent of live streaming and televised races, helps the masses find these stars of the future a lot sooner than before. Don't get me wrong though, FIA F4 is not perfect. There are more than enough championships running less than desirable driver counts, to the point where they don't even meet the requirements for an FIA super license points. But perhaps that in itself is merely a reflection of the driver market in each of these regions. After all, the likes of the United States, Germany and Japanese F4 championships continue to bring more than enough drivers to each event. Finally, while I think the FIA and local organisers have done a good job at making Formula 4 widely accessible, there are still regions on the globe that could desperately do with some recognition, namely South America, and there is a good argument for South Africa and the Indian subcontinent as well. At the end of the day, FIA Formula 4 has done the job it set out to do back in 2013. Sure, we never reached the stage where multiple cars would take part in each championship, and the announcement and then absence of the FIA F4 World Cup is puzzling, but the category itself has ultimately changed the racing landscape. As mentioned in the introduction, we already have drivers from F4 in F1 today, as well as other top disciplines such as Super Formula and IndyCar, thus proving its worth. Maybe in five years time we can revisit the series history again, but until then, 2019 will be where we finish off today. Thank you so much for watching. Whether you saw this video to the end or had it on in the background, I really appreciate you making it this far. What are your thoughts about Formula 4? Did I make any mistakes or miss anything out? Let me know in the comments and I might upload a corrections video in the coming weeks. For everything else video related, all of my references will be available in the description below, as well as any links to further reading should you be interested. I also want to take a quick moment to thank the following people and their organisations for their continued reporting of Formula 4 throughout the years as without their articles, this video would have never been possible. And finally, I want to thank everyone who has subscribed to me here on YouTube and those who have supported me on Patreon. These long form videos take a lot longer to create, so I appreciate everyone's patience. Right, with that all said and done, it's time to end. So, as always, until next time, goodbye.